Okay. Uh, this is the first problem from the final exam, first classical problem from the final exam of Physics 106 from 2023-24 academic year. Uh, in this problem, we have a current carrying wire, and below this wire, we have a rectangular loop. The dimensions of the loop is given. So this is B, and this is A, uh, as well as the distance of this loop from the wire is C. Uh, the wire is carrying a current I in this direction. And in part A, they are asking, using Ampere's law, calculate the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field due to the infinite wire at point P, a distance R from the wire. And I think this is the point P that's given. This is of distance R uh, from the wire itself. Right? So this is an application of Ampere's law, of course. Uh, they are explicitly saying that you have to uh, do this with Ampere's law. So to do this, we are going to choose an Amperian loop. The Amperian loop that reflects the symmetry of this uh, current carrying wire will be a circle right, that passes through this point P. So I'm trying to draw the circle such that this part is in the front, this part is in the back. So I'm going to choose the orientation of the circle in such a way that uh, the contribution of the current is going to be positive. So that requires going this way. So this is the orientation of my loop. And if I write down Ampere slope, so this is for part A, E dot EL is mu naught times the current. And we have to calculate the magnetic field due to this current. Now, uh, the magnetic field due to current carrying wires are in terms of loops because this system has cylindrical symmetry. That loop has to be a circle. So our magnetic field is going to be along this circle. That dot product becomes a simple product. And I'm choosing a positive sign here, implicitly assuming the magnetic field is in the direction of the loop that I'm choosing. Because of cylindrical symmetry, the magnetic field is constant, so I can take this out. And then this becomes E to pi r uh, equals mu naught times i. So B is something that you, of course, knew already. Mu naught over 2 pi i over r. This is the magnitude. And because I made the assumption that this is a this is actually in the direction of DL. The magnetic field at this point is going to be into the page or into the chalkboard in this case. This is what it's going to be like, right? So into the page. The page. Now for part B, they're asking to calculate the magnetic flux uh, phi B through the loop. Now uh, magnetic flux typically is just, you know, uh, B times A. But this is for a uniform magnetic field, and in this case, the magnetic field is not uniform. So what we need to do is to divide this area into parts such that in each of those parts, the magnetic field is going to be uniform, then I can apply this formula. Okay, so this doesn't work. What we are going to do is that say phi is sum of some infinitesimal phi's, okay, and an infinite sum of an infinitesimal parts is called an integral. That E phi is going to be uh, the magnetic field times dA. Now, what kind of little areas can I choose? You can, of course, divide this into little circles, but there's a more practical way. You can divide this into little strips. Okay. Uh, strips this way, and these strips are going to have some area dA, and there's going to be some flux passing through some through them. So d phi. let me take another color of chalk. I'm going to choose a coordinate system like this. This is my R, and the thickness of these guys is going to be dr. Okay? Uh, so I can write this down. This is d phi. This is b dA. So this is b times uh, b times the length of this strip times the thickness of the strip dr. So b times dr. And that magnetic field is going to be r, uh, something dependent on r. And so I, I'll choose my uh, limits of the integration as from c to C plus A, and this is something I already calculated here. This is from C to C plus A, mu naught over two pi, I over R, B times dr. Uh, this mu naught I, B, two pi, they're all constants. Then it becomes a logarithm. So because of the limits, this becomes a difference of logarithms. Difference of logarithms is the logarithm of the ratios. So my phi in the end is going to be mu naught 
times i b over 2 pi logarithm c plus a over c. And this is, in fact, the answer uh, given in the answer sheet. For part C, suppose the current in the infinite wire starts increasing in time as uh, I equals alpha T. So let's uh, raise this part and, and try to do part C over here. So the current is increasing at a rate, linearly increasing as a function of time as alpha times T, where alpha is some positive constant, what's the magnitude and direction of the induced current I induced in the loop? Okay. So I induced is the uh, current in this loop. Uh, explain briefly how the induced current's direction is determined. All right, so uh, the induced current is going to be a result of some EMF, set A, not a Q. Uh, is going to be a result of some EMF, and that EMF by Faraday's law is going to be the rate of change of uh, flux. So EMF is d phi by dt. I'm not going to worry about uh, uh, worry about the negative sign. I'm going to determine the direction of the current by hand later. So this is just the magnitude of the EMF. d phi is this here, except now i is alpha times t. Okay? So if phi is equal to mu naught alpha times t b over 2 pi ln c plus a over c, then the EMF is just going to be, the time derivative of this is just kills the t, right? So the EMF is going to be mu naught alpha b over 2 pi ln c plus a over c. They're asking not for the EMF, but the current. So we have to actually know the resistance. Do they give resistance here? Yes, in, in the uh, upper part, they actually give resistance to be R. So the current induced, I induced, is going to be EMF over R. So it's this whole thing over here divided by R. Right? This is mu naught alpha B over two pi R ln C plus A over C. Okay. We wrote the same thing again and again a couple of times, but this is what uh, looks like the, to be the answer. Now, what about the direction? Well, we have a magnetic field that's going this way, so the flux is this way, that's increasing. Okay. Uh, by Lenz's law, the effect, the induced current has to produce a magnetic field that opposes the change in the flux. So the flux is increasing this way, the magnetic uh, field produced by the induced current has to be this way. And that requires a current that's induced like so, okay. and we can look at this and say that this is counterclockwise. Okay. Yeah. Clockwise, CCW. Mm. And yeah, this is also, I think, how they mention. Is this the correct answer? Yeah. 